that's it. The Queen is dead. Long live the new Queen. Long before she reigned over Wimbledon Centre Court, Steffi Graf was in training for greatness. When did you start playing? How young were you? Uh, four years old, about. You're kidding, you couldn't hold the racket I know, at all, I don't. You? I uh, probably will not be able to call that tennis, but at least I was carrying the racket. <laughs> Jelly beans? Steffi learned father. tennis from her father, yeah, the, yeah. but it was her Aussie best friend, Renee Stubbs, who taught her to have fun. <laughs> Steffi's really shy with animals, you know? <laughs> <laughs> not. Hold it. What a star. Hold it. <laughs> compelling rivalry of Andre Agassi and Pete Sampras. But in women's tennis right now, there's just Steffi, Steffi and Steffi. Steffi Graf, the formidable Fraulein of the ladies circuit, is on a spree. She hasn't lost a set in her last three tournaments. For a while last year, and when Monica Sellers was playing, this winner of 15 Grand Slam titles seemed to be in decline but she's playing now as if there's no tomorrow, and with good reason. So a tremendous upset as Laurie McNeil defeats Steffi Graf in the first round of seven. The world is not accustomed to Steffi Graf losing. It comes as a surprise that for the first time in eight years, she doesn't hold a Grand Slam singles title. But if that's bothering Steffi, she's not letting on. She overpowered Graf today. Graf was not at her best. You know, these things I don't realise till some people tell me that. So I you're not obsessed with the statistics and the no, records? No, not at all. Six months ago, the world finally learned that Steffi had been battling chronic back pain. Hope that's not a problem. But few realised the extent of the injury. And Steffi Graf has to make a decision here. She may ask for an injury timeout, which means she gets three Was your back injury so serious that you might have had to give up tennis altogether? A lot of doctors told me that maybe I can't really continue to play. I need to have an operation. Even then, they would have not been able to tell me if the backs would have been 100%. Stretching wide on this backhand. Steffi has gambled and decided against back surgery. Instead, she's opted for physiotherapy to try to manage the pain that threatens to force her out of tennis. To be faced with that thought, though, when you are number one in the world, it must have been a, a devastating thing for you. Yeah, I think... It, I think at that moment I didn't really think about being number one or anything at all. It's just I felt it really difficult at that moment to, to think about leaving the game where I'm not ready to leave the game yet. That's it. The Queen is dead. Long live the new Queen. Steffi became the world's number one at the tender age of 18. She seems like a veteran today because she's been at the top for so long. When you won Wimbledon the very first time, was your heart <laughs> pounding? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you were so young. I was so young. I mean, I, it was, looking back, it was such a great match. It was magic because the way I played, I felt I couldn't really top it. Oh, that's an unbelievable shot. And then just holding the plate, it was just really special. When did you start playing? How young were you? Uh, four years old, about. You're kidding. You would have been too little to hold the racket. I know. Well, I don't. You? I probably will not be able to call that tennis, but at least I was carrying the racket. <laughs> this was a rare talent nurtured by tennis-playing parents. At kindergarten age, Steffi already had trick shots in her repertoire, skills fine-tuned indoors. Yeah, we would play that with chairs, which um, we had like. Um, a string attached to two chairs and we played over it and and I got better and better and the room just got smaller and the lamps just started you know being damaged by my play and my mother said let's get out of this living room and uh, so then my father teach me a little bit in a club. At 13 Steffi was one of the youngest players to turn professional. At 15 she was wowing them at Wimbledon. Oh. A lovely backhand by Steffi Graf. 
In her formative years, her dad did the coaching, and that fancy footwork was no accident. Did your parents push you hard like a lot of other young players? I wouldn't be there if anybody would have pushed me to be there. I think you can't push somebody to be there because this person is not going to enjoy tennis and this person doesn't want to... I think uh, at a certain age that, that person or that kid would not enjoy playing anymore. She's done it. Steffi pushed herself to tennis greatness. And she's done it. Five Wimbledon victories, four Australian Opens, three French and three US singles titles. Game, set, championship. Beyond the statistics, Steffi has always been a joy to watch. It's her athleticism that sets her apart. She looks so graceful on the court. What's she like around the house? <laughs> oh, God. She's probably one of the most clumsy, clumsiest people I've ever met. Just has to find the one table to hit or the one chair to kick or the one thing to fall over in the, the room. I, she's so clumsy. I don't know about those floral skirts. Steffi's closest friend on the circuit is Australian That's Renee right. Stubbs. Watch the railing behind, OK? You know you'll find them and you know you'll fall over it. The pals have paired up in doubles and teamed here to film a commercial for charity. Here we go, yes. Pull me up a little higher, please. They're opposites in many ways. Steffi, the coolly reserved champion. Renee, the larrikin Aussie fighting for a place among the world's top hundred players. It's Renee's passion for this game and for life that's helped Steffi through many a big match. Yeah, Renee Strubbs yelling out, come on, to her friend Steffi Gruff. I mean, I don't talk really too easily with, with others, especially I don't know them. But uh, with her it was real easy because she was um, very open, very direct, and so we got into a conversation right away. Then she got good enough to come into all the tournaments, and so we've been, so we've been good friends since. I mean, I would have loved to have accomplished one hundredth of what she's done in her career. Um, and everybody strives, that's why we're out here, everybody strives to be as good as her. Um, but at the same time, I enjoy my freedom. What candy do you like? Gummy bears? Jelly beans? When they get yeah, away from tennis, right they're like a couple of kids. Yeah. But they have the boysenberry and the raspberries as gummy beers. Yeah. Steffi so may be all German uh, precision. Okay in search of perfection on the court, but off the court, you see a very different Steffi. Shake. Oh, hi. <laughs> I've never met anybody that's as caring, you know, shares her things. Um, it's not the superstar prima donna at all. Hey. I just really enjoy being a friend with her and, and she, she takes it, a friendship's very important because she doesn't have many because it's hard for her to just be friends with everybody because why are people friends with her? And a lot of times it's because of who she is. Do you sometimes wish that you could trade places with Renee and have all the freedom that she has? Probably, yes. I think she, she does a few other things that I, I'm jealous of, but I think she, she just enjoys life a lot more. Not that I don't enjoy life, but I think she has a lot more time for herself. <laughs> Steffi has always seemed aloof in public, but she's grown up with cameras catching her every move. Even a smooch from a sea lion or have the gossip columnist talking. Has it been hard for her to have boyfriends, just like any normal woman? Yeah, I mean, when you have a boyfriend and you like who, who you are, it's like, OK, so we go off and go shopping and there's 15 cameras following me around and it's not a very nice way to kind of treat somebody on your first date. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, she's been with the same guy for a long time now and, and he's dealt with it. Steffi's boyfriend is the German racing car driver, Michael Bartels. If she turns up at the track, they really turn heads. Does he get bothered by the attention there? Oh, yeah, definitely. He <laughs> doesn't like it very much. <laughs> it's going to be a pretty volatile marriage, a racing car driver and a tennis champ. Um, probably. Um, I guess I wouldn't mind if we keep the questions a little bit different. I don't want to really get into my private life too much, if possible. She seems to be a most reluctant superstar. 
Well, yeah, that's just her. She's very shy. She's um, very, she's a very inner person. Um, like the, one of the first times I ever met her, she um, she never had any photos up on the on the wall of her house, and I was surprised. You know, I thought that she would have one or maybe two photos up of winning the Grand Slam or her first first Wimbledon. And uh, I mentioned that to her, and she said, "Well, she said I don't need that. I don't need it all on the walls. I have it in here." Down here, like smack. Come on over, Dave. Down there. Okay, great. Okay, here we go. The glamorous women of tennis are expected to play their part on and off the court. Everyone wants something. A picture. Thank you. A chat. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you very much. An endorsement. Ladies and gentlemen, look at Steffi Graf. As women's tennis has grown into a multi-million dollar spectacular, these athletes have become so familiar, we know them on a first name basis. And beyond the hype, there's enormous pressure. The public don't see that. They don't see the, the grind and the, and the sweat and the, and the tears. They see you playing, they see the glamorous TV life, they see the photo shoots and the, and the money, you know, but they don't see what goes on behind the scenes. The very public assault on Monica Sellers was an horrific byproduct of the fame game. Nearly two years ago, a German fan stepped from the crowd in Hamburg to stab Monica as she changed ends. He was obsessed with Steffi regaining her number one spot from Monica. In a way, he succeeded. He put Monica out of the game, but he also put Steffi on the ropes. It was a really difficult time for me. I think it, it really took like um, uh, seven, eight months to really get over it. It hurt me more to talk about it knowing that this person did it for me. You surely didn't blame yourself, though. I think it's difficult to say I blame myself because I know I didn't do it, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it, that kind of felt like I was the reason for it and uh, that I felt really, really, really bad about that, you know. Steffi has wrestled with the tragedy and the loss of what promised to be one of the greatest on-court rivalries in this sport. But there are real hopes the contest could be revived, with talk of Monica Sellers making a comeback. I think it would be unbelievable if she could come back. I would have so much respect for her. I think I personally would like it very much, and I would just enjoy seeing her being able to play again. Steffi knows the challenge of a great sporting comeback. She's had to battle her own demons just to stay on the court. Her greatest fear now is that it may be her back injury and not another player that drives her away from this game she loves. Do you think you can go on playing as long as Martina did? No, I know that for sure. <laughs> you don't want to? No, I don't want to. No, I think it's, it's real difficult. I mean, I'm 25 right now and she is already 37 when she stopped, so I can't see me playing another 12 years.